Hello, friends. We're back again. It's Fightful.com, and it's time for your TNA post show. It's March 14th, 2024. I am Agile Perlin, of course, with me. As always, the number one, the ride or die. The system works for her. She is big business, baby. She is Cresta Star. Hello, Cresta Star, fresh from Boston. How you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. This ponytail isn't working with me. So I'm just going to do the side thing. I think they did this in the 80s, right? That's what the Utes did. Yeah, it's the big deal from the 80s. And they came back for a little bit. So clearly you're fine. You're good. I'm hip. I'm cool. Big business was fantastic. I was late, so I missed all of Mercedes' promo. I had to watch it on my phone in the car. But I got to see her wrestle at the end. It was such a good card. I got to yell out, meet fantastic tna tonight also a good show how are you today joel how are you feeling i'm exhausted <laughs> <laughs> same listen i could the energy is up but the spirits yeah. are low <laughs> i was thinking to myself like i don't i don't love it when a, when a podcaster or someone who does this is like i'm tired here's the thing like I, listen it's okay we're tired we're still gonna be this fun we're still gonna Period. do our thing i don't want you to turn off and be like oh they're tired they're not gonna be no no we're gonna talk about tna we're gonna enjoy it People, you know, people might ask me, hey, why are you tired? Like, I got a lot of travel coming up. I'm going to be in Ottawa for Collision, for AW Collision. I will be there. I'm going to be on Sunday at Mystery Wrestling, which is Evil Uno's show, which he does live on Twitch. I will be there. And then I will be back on Wednesday in Toronto for AW Dynamite. I will be there. And then we'll be back again on Thursday for this TNA post show. There's always what's something to do. And I'm always going to be here for y'all. We're just tired sometimes. We we did we did an hour on sacrifice, and we did not think we were going to do an hour on a post sacrifice show, especially when like the first third of the show was 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 this. You mean honestly? That's what my brain says all the time. <laughs> I get it. Anyway, there's plenty to do. There's plenty to say. How about? We tell them how to leave a thumbs up on the video and, of course, subscribe to us here at youtube.com slash Fightful. By the way, FightfulOverbook.com, that is where our TNA Sacrifice post show landed because I don't know if you all know, it's WrestleMania season. So a lot of the focus when The Rock shows up on SmackDown, eh, people want to watch it on the main channel. So we went to the other channel. We decided to do our post show there. Go check it out. It's there. It was a good post show. Like I said, did an hour talking about TNA Sacrifice, all that we saw and then some. So go check that out. And of course... Go ahead, donate a super chat. Any email, get your question or statement read on the air, and it gets you to support this channel here, youtube.com slash Fightful, and also donate a Humper Chat over at humperchats.com, H-U-M-P-E-R, chats.com. Cresta, give them the info. When you go to humperchats.com, you put whatever question you want in there. Listen, keep it cute, or we're not going to read it. Keep it on mute. You put your dollar amount in there. We get to keep just a little bit more of the proceeds. It keeps the lights on. It gets us paid. It gets Joel paid. And listen, we get to go to places like Sacrifice. We don't. We get to go to places like Mania. We don't. But it could help. You know, it could be funded through you. Comfortchats.com. I ain't going to Windsor. What, what kind of death are you trying to put on me? Listen, I know nothing about my own geography, let alone Canadian geography. I get it. I do. But I know a lot about American geography, and I'm not going to Philly either. Am I going to St. Louis? I mean, honestly, I wasn't going to go to St. Louis, but so many people keep saying they're going to go. And I'm like, I mean, how expensive is St. Louis? If there's anything I do know is that anything in the middle is kind of cheap. So I could go there with $500 and be a baller. So, you know. To do it. I do. I don't have five hundred dollars, but if you would like to donate five hundred dollars in a humper chat and say Cresta is seeing the chicken dance for this five hundred dollars, I'll do it, and I will go to uh, St. Louis. I'll All right, for Dynasty. Now I know the words to the chicken dance. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're marketing everything. I swear. To God. <laughs> anyway, you can also support us at FightfulSelect.com. We will talk about Fightful Select a little bit later in the show. Tonight's impact was, uh, you know what, coming off of a pay per view, off of all, of, off of a, a special. This mm-hmm. was this was fine. This wasn't like a knock your socks off TV show, but you know it accomplished a few extra things, tied up a couple of loose ends, and you know had a couple of fun matches, which I appreciate. What do you think of this show overall tonight? Very talk heavy. Everyone had a lot to say. We got a lot of promos. Nothing wrong with a good promo. And like you said, this is very much we came off of a special. We want to make sure that we tie up the loose ends. It's only one thing that left me a little confused because last time we saw MK Ultra, they did lose to Spitfire and it seemed like they were breaking up. But tonight they seem they were solid. So, you know, I'm interested to see where that goes. Overall, it was a fun episode. It wasn't anything like if you missed this episode, fret not. That's true. You can probably just catch the highlights if you're really 
without time to watch it. Or of course you can listen to us here because we'll, we'll run you through it. The MK ultra stuff is interesting. And when we get there, um, I would like to say that I, I feel like it's a sister's fight type of start to this break. Mm-hmm. I do still think it's a break up, but we'll touch on that more once we get to it, but let's kick off the show. The X division championship is on the line. Mustafa Ali defends against Chris Saban. My goodness. Did not expect this to be a TV match. Thought they'd do this again on a pay-per-view, but guess what? There are no more specials or pay-per-views until Rebellion. Well, Rebellion is the next pay-per-view. So instead, we did the match on TV. It's a good match. It also continues the story, and it actually moves Saban into a little bit of a frustrated, closer to a tweener's territory. He was thinking about using that title towards the end, and it ends up costing him because Ali turns it around, hits him with the pin, Gets his feet on the ropes. Ali retains. What do you think of this match? Because it definitely got some people thinking. I'm struggling because I got the hiccups and I don't know how to make it stop. And that's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah, did I do it? I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Let's see. Let me say. Let me say a sentence. I want to say that I am here for a heel. Motor City Machine Guns. I'm tired of them being a good guys. And when I think of Motor City Machine Guns, I kind of think of Nah, she. That's what I'm ready for. I'm ready for some bad guys. Shelly's already there. Shelly's mad. Saban tonight, he took the bait. He took the bait. Ali said, gotcha. I'm going to trick you with this and the ref bump and the, and the title. And you took the bait. And what happened? You got rolled up and the feats was on the rope. Darn. Really, though, the spot for me was the ending shot where Saban's just looking there like, am I stupid? <laughs> The good it was good camera work there was some really really good spots that they got the opening when they did Saban beating up the uh the security that was the, funny that ruled it was just bad out of hell Michigan guy coming off and beating off beating up everyone not beating off that's something else and then Saban doing the O Canada PD Williams spot where he's standing on the crotch in the corner that's good stuff I appreciate squashing I do appreciate also too how commentary was like up to the ref's discretion that's a disqualification well, I mean, listen, this is the same ref that got knocked loopy through most of the show on Friday night. So I give him some leeway. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> the match itself was fine. Again, this is a good, it's a good match to go out of your way to see because Ali and Saban know how to do this yes. very well in a very high level. And I think that it's, it's a good start to a next match. But the problem is, I mean, Ali is 2-0 and up on Saban. So where can you go unless Saban turns it into a best of five somehow? I think at this point, Saban needs to pack it up. It might be time for Saban to move on. It's okay. There have been plenty of people who have lost 2-0 and say, you know what? Heck you. I'm going to go uh, do something else. I don't need this stinking title. I think the ending shot really said it all. Where He was like, wow, I even cheated and I lost. <laughs> Yeah, AO Productions sends a super chat, gets us kicked off. And this is a good point. Love the ending scene with Saban. Goodbye to the title he cherishes. And if that's the case, you know what? I'd be okay with that too. If that means we get to move on from Chris Saban being 10 time X Division champion, did all the things. Now we're going to move it along and get to the next challenger, which I can tell you, we are going to get to a new challenger very soon for that X Division mm-hmm. championship. And I'm sure it's going to be really something when we did, when we get there. Okay. So, uh, was I'll- that a hint? I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're okay. talking about. You're Jim Miller's backstage with Nick Nemeth and Speedball Mountain, Danger Zone, and Bowing. That's basically all I got from that promo. How about you? I wrote, it's a promo, Danger Zone. <laughs> hey, if this was Hollywood Squares, whatever that game is, we got the same answer. We would have won some money. <laughs> yeah, that would have been perfect. There, There's that $500 Super Chat you wanted. Yeah, we that. did it. Listen, because of AO Productions, we now need a 495 <laughs> We're basically almost there. We're almost there. You gotta, you gotta believe, like in Joe Hendry, we believe. Uh, we will believe in him later. Josh Alexander comes out. He goes over his accolades, <laughs> talks about beating Will Ospreay, holding the TNA title for the longest in history. And then, you know, he's like, I, I beat everyone else on the way. Carl, uh, Carl Gotch, wow. Simon Gotch and others on the way. And he wants to recapture the world championship. But then he talks about Alexander Hammerstone, who beat him by going low at sacrifice and stealing the headgear. And he said, well, you know what? That's not my identity, that headgear. It's my heart. That's what makes me, me. And he thanks Hammerstone and says, I'm focused on kicking your ass and says, I challenge you to a match. Hammerstone's not there. Out comes Alpha Bravo and Oleg Prudius. 
I was so confused. My literal note is, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then you remember that going into Sacrifice, they did Bravo versus Alexander. And it was, a, a, not Bravo, sorry, a Dango versus Alexander. It was a really good match. And so Bravo comes out and he says, you know what? All these people know that Dango softened you up ahead of Sacrifice. And that's why Alexander Hammerstone won. And I laughed. And then Dango comes out and attacks Josh from behind. Josh throws him out. And then Oleg Prudius is like, I'll fight you. Security comes in. They try to stop him, and then out comes Santino Morella, and he makes the match between Josh Alexander and Oleg Prudius. Fast match. Kind of wish it had been better than this. Prudius taps. It's quick. It's painful. It hurts. I'd have rather just the promo. Because honestly, what, what did you do all of that for, Oleg? You kind of... You look like Unz Jabron right there. After you, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat you up. Just for him to roll you up two times and for you to tap, like, get this man off me. Like, ah, <laughs> He doesn't get paid by the hour. <laughs> it just could have been so much more. I was expecting a more heavy-hitting match. I Maybe I'm crazy, but Josh <laughs> Alexander is clearly on the warpath. Prudius is clearly not that guy, and that's okay. He's he's seconding Dango. That's That's okay. I just expected the muscle to get a little more muscly than he got. I agree. I've seen less muscly people get more muscle in. Pro, like, literally, Oleg did a roll up into an ankle lock. And <laughs> that was it. All I wanted was, like, you couldn't give me three rounds, Mo. Instead, we got, like, two minutes. Not even <laughs> a lariat? <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a good point. Beat him up in the corner, and that was it. I was like, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, very that. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, tapped out quick. And I was like, all right, it's Josh. I get it. He is the guy. They're trying mm. to set up for him. But also, like, here's the other thing. I guess, I guess from a psychology standpoint, I can understand why they're doing pretty as quickly getting, you know, beat because he's a big, muscly guy. Mm -hmm. So is Alexander Hammerstone. Mm -hmm. So it shows that Josh is not afraid of big, muscly guys and can take them down quickly and has the the factor to do it. So for that, I can understand. But I just wanted like a little bit more out of Oleg Prudius. That's all. I will say in the inverse by that same psychology, it just kind of makes me feel like Oleg's here just to be, you're a chihuahua. You got more bark than bite and I'm not afraid. Well, speaking of more bark than bite, Crazy Steve comes out next. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, that's someone who's not afraid. <laughs> not all comers. There's more people are finding out just how crazy Steve is and Dreamer, Rhino, Hendry. They all found out because he's defeated them. He says he's the only title holder in the back who always defends his championship. I'm sitting there. I was like, wait a minute. What? That doesn't sound right. But here we are. He says it. And then he says no other man alive can handle that type of pressure. And PCO is not alive. So PCO comes out. <laughs> Listen, PCO was the first draft pick when they made TNA. So we said he's going to be featured heavily. And sure as the promise is, as the sun will rise, PCO has been featured very heavily. And no one thinks to cut off his heart defibrillator when he comes out. But this time he didn't come out with the nurse. He just came out with a vest. It sounds like they finally stopped it for good. Or at least in the, maybe they'll just make it the, the pay-per-view presentation, not even the specials. Mm -hmm. Just make, like, They really milked those entrances with the... The revival, not FTR, but the revival of, of PCO. Although now I really want to see the revival in PCO as a six person back. I'm not going to hold you. Every time I see really long entrances like that, like PCOs and Undertakers especially, I'm like, why don't you just attack this guy? Didn't Macklin attack PCO when he was reviving? Somebody attacked PCO while the nurses was working on him. And they're like, I'm not, I'm not going to let you hulk up, buddy. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're gonna do pc on crazy steve that's that's fine that's gonna be for the digital media championship next week on impact the uh the, it's funny because you and i sat here after sacrifice and even before and we said mm -hmm. you know pco he defeats Khan, and then he's next in line to moose and then everyone's gonna complain that it's gonna be moose and pco but then they're gonna have a banger of a match and moose is gonna win and we're gonna be like oh it's actually a pretty good title defense for moose uh i guess that's not what we're doing we're gonna do crazy steve and pco how do you feel about those two just having a whack at the digital media championship i low-key feel like pco about to win the digital media <laughs> the thing, like the digital media championship was supposed to be for digital media matches and like nobody's really done anything like that joe hendry was probably the closest they were going to have Jordan Grace. Jordan Grace was like, I'll defend this title on like my OnlyFans or something. I was like, that, that's perfect. Let's do that. I don't know what PCO would do. 
I don't send think, it in the you know, underworld and the morgue. Come on I, now. I don't think PCO knows how to use digital media. I feel like if you do, he's just screaming into the void. Do you think Crazy Steve knows how to use digital media? No, well, it depends who you ask. I don't think. Okay. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I think PCO is going to win this. And it's going to be because either PCO is going to win this or you're going to fork PCO, no pun intended. And PCO is not going to be a phase. Like he's going to have to acu acupuncture. Wow. Acupuncture PCO with a million forks. And even then, when PCO, like me, feel no pain. <laughs> Here's a free, free concept for TNA. For anyone who's watching in the, in, in the TNA staff, you take the digital media champion. Whenever they have a match, their full match gets aired live on their social media pages. Just like completely live. But you'd have to put like a cell phone camera in the corner. So it's yeah. on like one angle. So it's like a live stream. <laughs> They've done it before. Believe me. There's plenty of experience of them. Oh, using yes. <laughs> yes. The Twitch days were not great for Impact Wrestling. Let me tell you. I got to tell you that though. In, that, in this moment, that popped me. Like that would be annoying after the fifth time. But the first four times I'm laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> And then you get the notification, CNA Wrestling just went live, Digital Media Champion, Crazy Steve in this case, goes up live, da, 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 da. like, come on, come on, let's go. It writes itself, that's free, that's free. That's on free. a scale of one to America, that's free, baby. <laughs> we get some very weird messages tomorrow. Chuck J says a super chat saying, my TNA fix, let's get it. Creston Joel, love y'all. We appreciate you, Chuck. Thanks for hanging out with us. Oh, man, this is some good stuff. Frankie Kazarian and Ace Austin, the king not of the mountain, the king of TNA. I love that Frankie is still riding this. I love that he's going after Jade Chung and saying, hey, call me by the name. And I love that eventually this has to go to a king of the mountain match. It has to. I don't know if you can do that at the Palms in Vegas, but if you can do it at the site of Slammiversary, make it happen, please. This is a solid match. Ace Austin does not win, but the finish was fantastic. You've got Ace Austin trying to get into a bridge pin position. And then all of a sudden it becomes a chicken wing from Kazarian. It's masterful. Ace Austin taps out. No harm in that. Frankie spent the entire match just trying to goad Chris Bay and just taking apart Ace Austin piece by piece. And then we'll get to the post match. What do you think of the match itself? Kazarian and Austin. I forgot to say at the top of the show, and I will say this now. Jade looked phenomenal tonight. That purple, everything. Jade Chung, you ate that. Not a crumb was left. In fact, I'm hungry because you ate everything. It was so beautiful. That being said, Frankie, you really need to watch how you talk it to that Josh Alexander's wife. My guy, you're gonna you are gonna get beat up. <laughs> Like, this is the second time he's been coming in hot at Jay. Like, announce me like this. Dude, like, oh, yo, yo, yo. And you know she's a wrestler, too. I see her kick Bully Ray in the balls. Stop. <laughs> Cease. <laughs> Immediately. Cresta, um, Cresta, yes. Cresta. I have one, one thing on my TNA bucket list before I ride off into the wrestling media sunset. Because one day it'll happen. I want one thing. What? Jay Chung versus George Iceman. Especially now. Dude, and I'm trying. I Every time they interact on social media, my ass is right in there. And I'm like, well, the you two should fight. And every time someone replies, I'm going to fight them. Do the job, Iceman. No. <laughs> Do the job, Iceman. <laughs> Book it. Book it for me. That's funny. I have to go and look at their Twitters to see their interactions because I didn't know they had beef. Is it like the Mia Yim Shelton Benjamin beef? Oh, of course. Nobody <laughs> that company really hates each other that much. But no, it's you know, he hates or sorry, Jade hates that George keeps getting in the way when introducing Ash. Because he's rude to her too. And he really needs okay, again. That's Josh Alexander's whole wife. Y'all, y'all need to stop there again as his promo said they don't call me the walk a weapon for nothing. So, you know, watch him out. Back to the match. Back on track. I back to the match. I'm so sorry. I, we went off on a tangent there. No, the match itself was fine. Ace Austin really tried his best, but I agree with you. That finisher with the transition from the bridge pin into the chicken wing. When he did the bridge pin, 
I felt like that was the second time he did something like that. Like, yo, Kaz almost got you the first time that way. The electric chair uh, power bomb where he crisscrossed his arms was pretty gnarly looking too. I, at, I'm i kind of getting interested in Kazarian. I want this, like you said, to go somewhere. King of the Mountain makes sense. You've got a lot of people that he's pissing off on the way. you got an Eric Young so far. You've got an Ace Austin. <clears throat> Maybe even Chris Bay, and now you already got four members in there. And I don't think it'd be Chris Bay and Ace Austin. I'd be like either one of them. You know what I mean? That's already three competitors out of what? I think eight. You can do it with six. Six. You can do it with eight. I mean, listen, you just need an even number. All right, we can do it with six, but even so, that's half the battle right there. And it might just be everyone hates Frankie. <laughs> that's fine. If everyone beats up Frankie and Frankie still finds a way to win, I'm all for it. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, we have permission to hate him, and he's really living up the scumbag gimmick. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, Frankie continues to just really knock this out of the park. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, someone like him should be, and he's doing it the proper way. So I do appreciate that. Again, good match. Ace looks good, even in defeats. And you opened up a match to do Bay versus Kazarian next. But of course, after the match, Kazarian does attack Chris Bay, and out comes Eric Young to make the save. So Maybe Kazarian gets a couple of friends. Maybe some grizzled young veterans want to come after Ace of Bays again, and we can do a six. I, maybe not, because we just kind of went there with ABC. But I don't know who Kazarian's going to make friends with. Could be the Rascals, even. And we'll do Eric Young in a six-man uh, down the line. It feels like they can get there. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a bunch of free agents. There's also a Jake something lurking around in the shadows i feel like the good hands are very disenfranchised so you could do them and i mean if you need someone to take the pin for you you got some good hands you know what i mean like the good hands are great wrestlers but i'll just say they're very easily manipulated <laughs> yeah you know what like again eric young versus kazarian feels like they're gonna move on something do a big stipulation match to blow mm -hmm. them off uh and i keep saying that it should be a uh, loser leaves tna match and if that's eric young's actual swan song i'm not against it um, why when you said loser leaves TNA, we were, we're out, we were coming up, we're coming up on the AJ Francis match, and I thought somebody was going to say AJ Styles in my Discord, and somebody said loser has to lose the AJ in their name, <laughs> and that's what that reminds me of. I'm so sorry, that's, really random, so random. <laughs> it was random, but good for you, good for putting it out there. The ADHD is strong tonight. My apologies, y'all. It's okay. This is what happens. It's late. It's at 10:30 vibes. Late night. Late? Uh, uh, define old because PCO be doing PCO salts and we over here complaining about sitting in front of a computer. So, you know. <laughs> well, I'm not going to answer that question for myself. The system <laughs> come out. They come out. They don't, they don't come out. They're in the streets. They're walking. And it's, this is a really, really well shot promo. One thing I loved about it, they did the crawler. So they do, they open up, they say, you take the locker room's accomplishments and it doesn't add up to those of the systems. And then individually, Moose, Myers, and Edwards, they all list their accomplishments. Moose is three-time world champion, two-time grand champion. Remember that title? Call your shot gauntlet winner, bunch of football stuff. Myers is twice tag champion, one-time digital media champion, headlined a wrestle. Well, it was in the, the opening contest of a WrestleMania where he won the tag titles, major figures, wrestling pods, so on and so forth. Edwards, Edwards, by the way, is like the most decorated champion of everyone. Two-time TNA world champion, two-time X division champion, six-time tag champion, 2019 call your shot gauntlet, one-time ROH world champion, one-time ROH, two-time ROH tag champion, one-time ROH world champion, one-time no uh, the GHC world champion, which is a uh, pro wrestling Noah. And he was the first guy Jin to win. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is all wonderful. No accomplishments for Lish. I thought the same thing. Lish was like, I'm happy to be here. Like, that's crazy. Cause I know she used to wrestle. I'm um, she did what she wasn't she in a tag team? Did she she didn't do nothing? That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, she's a ride or die, so she is the accomplice to the two-time TNA world champion. Two times, I'm not gonna do this again. Justice for Lish. <laughs> you had a match against Trinity that was entertaining, so there's that. Yeah, like you say, I was the girl who took Trinity to live. Like y'all did all of that. Just had Lish standing there, like go team. I I had Trinity do a table spot for my match. You know what, Lish? You should turn on them. <laughs> you imagine? I can. I can actually. I can. The way she's been yelling on the ring apron, the way she's just been like peak heel. I can. I can. And imagine well, her working. I think it'd be so funny. 
Well, you must have been like supremely upset at everything and everyone <laughs> last night because you were in Boston. You were surrounded by Lish Edwards. You know, that's my gimmick online, but I've been going to Boston for quite some time. I never have a bad time in Boston. Boston's always really nice to me, so I'm not mad. I'm sorry. Why are you going to say, bro? Are you right? You know what? Heck, Boston. There's a Dunkin' Donuts on every corner. I was so mad I'll go throw my tea in the harbor. I <laughs> did you pack your khakis? I ended up doing this right now. <laughs> did you pack your khakis? <laughs> <laughs> did you put your khakis? Jim Miller's backstage with Saban, Shelly, and Kushida. They're interrupted by GYV. Shelly walks off. He's like, ah, I ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> you could take on the time splitters. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that was sudden. Kushida and Saban versus GYV next week. That was crazy, though, because before anyone could say anything, Shelly was just like, fight these two. I hate everything. Saban's already, like, upset. Like, you could see it in Saban's face, the lyrics to Simple's plans. How could this happen to me? Is just playing over and over and over again. And Kashida's like, yo, Shelly, chill out, bro. Your friend is in crisis right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kashida's sitting there like, I'm just a kid and life is a nightmare. <laughs> Honestly... It's I'm the only song this. people know. I just want them all to be heel at this point. I'm ready for a heel machine. Heel machine gun. <laughs> well, tell you what. I can't give you heel machine gun, but I can give you heel rich swan. It finally happened. To the surprise of nobody, if you've been following our show. I mean, it, honestly, you knew what it was when he was shaved. That's true. That's how you know that rich swan is about to turn heel. Take notes. Anyway, AJ Francis versus Joe Hendry. AJ Francis' first singles match in TNA. Very good, fun match. Hendry calls Francis a giant and an artist. Says he's tough on the outside, but inside, we sensitive. It's okay to cry and cry and cry like people when they when they chant, AJ sucks. And then AJ attacks Hendry before he finishes his shtick. I love that Ray Wolk calls Joe Hendry a twisted Tony Robbins. <laughs> Sometimes he's a he's a bard. He gets his actions and his meanness through song. That's true. The Tennessee whiskey. Speaking of songs, the knee flip that uh, it, it's there. The Joe, not Joe, that AJ Francis does is good stuff. He flips over the rope, does the taunt. Uh, Henry reverses the DDT. It was a good 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 spots all around. Referee gets knocked down. Francis grabs a chair. Henry <laughs> and Francis fight over it. Rich Swan comes out. Teases siding with Henry, but of course no. He turns on his best friend Joe Henry. He doesn't believe anymore. He's outside, but it's good. What do you think of this Rich Swan and AJ Francis tag team? I mean, I don't know AJ Francis personally, and I've heard he's a very sweet man, but this crowd was not here for him. They hate him. They hate him, and they hate him. That being said, again, I would say this every week, kudos for him for trying to turn lemon into lemonade. Everybody love Rich Swan, so why not add Rich Swan to the mix? I don't hate it. I will say though, that music video Joe Henry about to do on Rich Swan is gonna be heat. Oh my god! <laughs> that music video he about to do on Rich Swan is gonna be heat. Ooh. Oh my god! Hold oh, the the things that I'm thinking that Joe Henry could say versus what what he might. Oh man. I respect you, Rich Swan, but Joe Hendry about to disrespect you, my man. Like, oh, that's about to be some heat. That video is going to be some heat. Hey, because you got the music with the boom, 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 boom. Oh, he's going to cook you. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for y'all to subscribe to FightfulSelect.com. The best five bucks in the business. How about that? You want Mercedes Monet news? We got that. You want the timeline of how she wound up in AEW? Buddy, we got that. A whole long, and I mean long explanation of how that went down over on fightfulselect.com the best five bucks in the business nxt scoops Corey brennan's beating that up and eating it up he's doing well that's really what i'm saying nxt scoops over on fightfulselect.com tna scoops once in a while of course because that's what we do and then gotta ask grap city every two weeks sour graps literally whenever alex and kate decide to do it sean does his q a once a week our fightful select discord is on fire we're busy there's even a tna portion of that discord there's a channel there talk about tna with us we're there go and do it fivefulselect.com the best five bucks in the business you might say it's money and it's more sometimes i pop in that discord too and i it's say true. things and then i leave i'm still trying to tell them that i work there but maybe they think i'm fake 
but you know. <laughs> you think Ash by elegance had to explain to Alan Angels <sighs> that she shouldn't be on the sign check? Let me tell you something. I've been down on Ash by Elegance since this gimmick first started, but you know what? She was well within her rights tonight. Much like Cher, she didn't sign up for this chicken shit gig. You had me sitting on dusty boxes. I told you I need champagne. You didn't learn last week when I was sipping my champagne and smizzied outside the ring. Come on now. And then you being a dweeb at that. Everything that we complain about wrestling fans doing to female wrestling, female wrestlers. This is what you do, Alan Angels? For shame. For I'm surprised Iceman though didn't say get out the damn shot and let me do the <laughs> uh, that was he got real into it at the beginning. I like that he's just like he goes on a whole tirade and he ends it with <laughs> this isn't the Ritz, this is the shits. <laughs> 10 out of 10 lied. Iceman is the best and the worst partner to have because yeah, he's great. Turn it down, I'm the star. <laughs> And then, yeah, so Alan Angels, who's completely just starstruck and in love with Ash by elegance. I almost winded myself there. You've got Iceman, meanwhile, just being like, and her consigliere. And her consigliere. He's just freaking out. Concierge. Oh, concierge. Sorry, I watch NXT, so I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> Too many C words. What can I say? This anyway, is I have She's not an Italian mob boss, I guess. Uh, they, yeah, they look so uncomfortable sitting on those road cases. I do like that the set is a little brighter. It's not just inside a random room with lights flashing mm -hmm. everywhere. This is good. It, it looks uncomfortable, but it's better shooting this time, I think. Just that, again, depth of field just looks better. That's just me. Angel's marking out the whole time and says, Ash, you, you've got a huge announcement. Dude. And I'm thinking like, are they taking shots at like wrestling podcasters who kind of get excited over stuff like this? Because like, yeah, it's kind of, kind of low if you do. Anyway, and then she says, I'm going to have my third match. And then Angels is like, oh, okay, yeah, great. And then, of course, they get rushed out of there. She touches him, and she gets Angels gets very excited that uh, he gets touched by Ash. By elegance. Rather mean touched by an angel, baby. I was going to say touched by, because that's the thing. I need Ash to get touched by an Alan Angels. In the arms of an angel. <laughs> I will say, the camera quality, like you said, the depth of field is better. But the angles were terrible. And I think that it was, you could tell it was, was intentional. intentional. Yeah. And I lived. I lived. Because it's like, it's really good. And you guys are just like, hey, we're letting it. This is whatever it is. And poor Alan, if that was the night of your life, I wish to be you. Because honestly, honestly, I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. If Joe I mean, Henry wish, looked at me and touched me, I might disintegrate. So I understand. I mean, I wish my life had a little more meaning, but, you know, that's just me. I, you're Joel freaking Pearl. What do you mean? You're the best. Yeah, I'm a lot of things. Uh, Dex Baker says a super chat saying, Cresta is officially right. Henry made fun of a man for being sensitive. He's a bully and a heel, and we cheer for him. I mean, where is the lie? I said this months ago that Joe Henry is not the hero. But much like a bard, because that's really what he is. He's a bard. Bards will make fun of people, and we're all laughing. But you know who's not laughing? The person getting made fun of, okay? That's right. We're, <laughs> you know, we're all sensitive inside. We're human. We all feel sensitive feelings. Joe Henry he, is just the guy who calls us out on that. In song form and makes it catchy. You were indie famous, now you're really rich. But to me, you will always be edges. That lives in my head rent free, bro. Tell me about <laughs> it. Good lord. <laughs> like I said, I feel bad for Rich Swan because I, bro, when he said you were the cheese itch, yo, Joe Henry comes with heat every week. Please, Rich Swan, I, I feel bad for you. I, I hope. I hope that maybe he just misses this time, but Joe Henry don't miss, so good luck. No, he doesn't. That's the problem. And the Rich Swan video is going to be better than the last. And if it's not, someone's going to be angry on the internet about it. And her name is Cresta Star. Ah, uh, no, I'm not that guy, pal. I, I'm fake angry on the internet. Like, if you meet me in real life, I'm probably, like, kind of, like, angry, but I'm not, like, plankton angry. I'm not, like, real life angry. I'm not, like, like just being horny on the internet's my gimmick. In real life, I'm shy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds... That sounds exactly I'm so shy. I'm incredibly shy. <laughs> anyway, MK Ultra's not shy. <laughs> that's a group that's not shy. <laughs> not at all. 
they're still together. Spitfire, the new Knockouts Tag Champions, <laughs> Danny Luna and Jody Thread. They defeat Vanna Black and Bia Moss. Vanna Black, not her first foray into TNA wrestling. She's been around. I saw her at the Emergence tapings. This was back in August of 2023. So good to see her back. I wasn't sure when it would happen, but uh, she had a good showing. Know. Her and Bia Moss, listen, we knew they were enhancement. They still gave Spitfire a good match. Uh, MK Ultra came out. They sat at ringside, and, and DK came out, and they stood at the uh, top of the stage. I love the matching purple gear that Spitfire have now. Uh, they're they're a cohesive tag team. I will tell you why I didn't love their finish after you tell me how you felt about Spitfire versus Black and Moss. A little strange to have your tag team champions go against Enhancement Challenge right away but also i think their whole knockouts tag division was out there it's an accurate depiction of events yes i'm trying to think because i was really like the shots of raj is gone decay was out there mk ultra's out there spitfire's out there ain't nobody else so you that's your whole division bro so <laughs> do with that information as you will the match was fine the match was fine. But that's what, again, that's what stood out to me, that this is your whole division. This is your whole division. Let's take a look at the TNA roster page. Who are, uh, oh, wow, yeah. Ooh. What are the tag teams? Are? They, like, Z just, go ahead. So, so Zaya Brookside could find a tag partner. Tasha Steeles could find a tag partner. Kylan King is injured. That's the unfortunate reality. Kylan yeah. King has an ACL injury. So her and uh, and Taylor Wilde were doing their thing. I think Taylor's also injured. That's another thing. So the, Savannah Evans coming back, maybe, I don't know. Do you want to do Savannah Evans and either Brookside or Steeles? You could. It's very strange. Th th there aren't a lot of options. Yeah, I mean, like, again, this is not a knock on TNA because their women's division has a good depth. But this was their whole, that was their whole knockouts division. That was everyone. That was everyone. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Ah. And I get it. Like right now, they're kind of in a rebuilding when yeah. it comes to their knockouts division. They, they're they they're refocusing and that's fine. They're just, there's only so much you can do with TNA when it comes to contracted talent. And there's only so much you can do when your taping schedule involves flavor of the month. And I don't mean that in a negative way. The guest star effect is what I've, call it right yeah where you bring in a team and they're there for either one pay-per-view cycle or one taping cycle and they're there but you don't get any meaningful long-term storytelling because you've only contracted them for a short amount of time can they change that absolutely i saw that gail kim was like yeah be patient we're gonna fix it or we're gonna bring in more talent and they will mm -hmm. uh so some of the uk talent that were hired over the uk tour back at the end of last year they're gonna start coming in uh starting in the in the, the coming weeks and that's great that's gonna that's one or two. That's not, you know, five or six or anything like that. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. I was just merely pointing it out. That's all I was saying. Like, no, I, again, I feel like as your tag team champions, maybe come out strong against another established tag team. But it was either going to be MK Ultra again or Decay. Spitfire. A Spitfire is a champion. Oh, I know. I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> if given the choice. There's my choice. The double move finish that Spitfire does. So I like it. It's a fireman's carry into a power bomb. The only way that I would split it up is basically make sure that you are the legal competitor who does the power bomb. In other words, if it's always Danny Luna who's going to do the power bomb, make sure Danny Luna is the legal competitor when you hit the move because uh -huh. otherwise it's very awkward to have Jody Threat hit a fireman's carry and then Danny Luna hit the power bomb and then Danny Luna has to move and get the pin. Now, as I say this, I remember in WWE when Heavy Machinery were a tag team. Remember Otis and he had a tag team partner, Tucker, when they did what they called the trash compactor. Otis would do the, the slam and then he would roll out of the ring and it was very smooth while Tucker got the pin. You can do that. You just have to work on the fluidity of the move mm -hmm. if you're not the legal competitor. I would prefer that the legal competitor, which I guess in this case was always going to be Danny Luna for the powerbomb portion, is always the legal competitor, therefore always getting the pinfall victory. Yeah, I can see that. It didn't bother me as much as it, it did you. In fact, now that you said it, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, because she did have to scramble out the way. I think it once they find a, their better footing and become more um, seamless, it'll either be that or the like you said with Tucky and uh, Otis. Somebody gonna roll out the way. Somebody gonna roll out the way. So 
Yeah, exactly. It's not saying don't do the move. It's more just if you're going to do the move, scout how you're going to move out of the way or get into the position for the right uh, for the right pinfall, Victor. Uh, and of course, Danny Luna is so damn strong, hitting a double suplex on Moss and Black looks so good. It was so S T R O N K, not even straw, but stroke. It Capital. was good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Tasha Steele's cuts off Tom Hannafin and Matthew Raywalt after they're just like, hey, by the way, TNA Sacrifice, go watch the show because uh, there were some tech issues, right? It was like, hey, you, you guys did a really good job on the show, but uh, if you saw this for most of the show, then you're probably going to want to go and uh, watch uh, the show now that it's uh, uploaded. Anyway, it's a good show. Go check it out. Tasha Steele says she was never pinned at Sacrifice. That is factual. She challenges Gordon Jordan Grace to a Knockouts Championship match next week on the program. It does get announced, along with GY Beers versus Time Splitters, Crazy C versus PCO, and of course, in action in her third match, it will be Ash by Elegance. Sienna sent a super chat saying, "Do you think Ash? I'm not going to do that. Will dethrone Jordan Grace? I don't know what Jordan's contract details are, but they better do everything to get her to resign. They have had her resign. She signed a two year deal after emergence. No, she was without a contract going into. She she did resign. Jordan resigned for a two year deal, if I remember correctly. Details are on Fifle.com. We did bro- break the news over on Fifle Select when it happened. Regardless, Jordan has a contract. She is part of this. Whether or not Ash versus Jordan is to create a new champion in Ash by Elegance, I don't know. And I think if I had to pick, I would pick anybody else to be the champion after Jordan Grace. Your thoughts? Ash by Elegance has not had not one non-squash match. That being said, I'm about to say something nice. Get your cameras ready. I Hold on, hold on. No, you know what? Just say it. I'll screen cap it later. It's all good. There is a chance that we could be changing our tune when she has a real match. I feel like this was something we we, we said before about um, Giselle Shaw. And I don't mind. And in fact, I enjoy being wrong when it comes about professional wrestling. If I have a preconceived notion about somebody, I love being proved wrong when they really show me what they've got in the ring. I think right now, Ash by Elegance, just me, and I'm not a wrestler, so take my my opinion with a grain of salt, is that it, whatever you're doing is kind of, we've seen this before, and it's not really connecting. And George Iceman is just too phenomenal. He's too good. You got to turn on him. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing. It is part of the story is eventually Iceman's going to have to be either kicked aside or become collateral damage to building a big-time heel in Ash by Elegance. And I think I think she's got the stones. I think she's got it in her. If we do make her champion after Grace, Iceman's got to cheat. They they've got to cheat, like like make cheat. However, I will reserve that judgment. That's just me based off the presentation I've been given. Now she could be like Giselle Shaw, who for a hot minute we were like, I would love to see her as champion. She's gotten so much better. Like the in ring presentation is there. I just think right now the in ring presentation isn't connecting. The moves are good. The moves are solid. But much like AJ Francis, it's just there's a disconnect here. And what that disconnect is, I don't know. And I think once again, I the two options is either she's got to give it up in the ring in a real match or you got to be a super heel and turn on Iceman, who everyone is loving more than the gimmick itself. And I don't think that's a, a diss to anyone. Iceman's just really good at his job. Be better. No, that sounds like a diss. Oh my god, never mind. Yeah, wow. yeah. <laughs> no, wow. no, so it's gonna take out of the context. Oh my god. It's okay. It's okay. We know who watches this show. It's okay. The uh the thing with Ash is that you have a month now to get to that point where she faces Jordan Grace, if that's the match. Mm-hmm. Ash's match next week is an enhancement match. You don't say it's my third match and then not tell you who it is. You're just going to say she's in action. Uh, that involves her finally getting some real competition. We said we said it would be anybody else at this point, but she's still doing that. We have to get real matches that go longer than three minutes and really start testing her if we're if she's going to be the Knockouts World Title match at Rebellion. I don't hate it. I don't hate it, but it's one of those things where respectfully, and this is with all the respect to the women in that locker room, there's not nobody who is contracted even for a little bit in TNA 
who is you you can't no no half stepping. Not even Zaya Brookside who just got here. There is no half stepping. None. None. Period. Period. And I I just wonder if we're doing this because she's still half stepping. And I don't and I don't want to believe that because I see I see it in the ring, but it's like at this point even Giselle was on to a Savannah Evans or a Tasha. She she had moved on to someone else, you know. So that's that's where my trepidation is. I she needs someone, but who that someone is, I don't know. I don't know. There's room for Ash to steal the championship. <sighs> you know, you can have a spot where Ash does walk away with the title, mm-hmm. and then Jordan Grace and her have to have another match down the line. It's not the end of the world to do that. It's just it would be nice to see the person who beats Jordan Grace get a rub for that title win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect way to put it. Like I I think that everyone every woman in TNA has the chance to be TNA champion because TNA the knockouts division amazing. We just we just we just know the type of competition. You can't just beat up enhancement and then be like, okay, I'm going for champion because that wouldn't fly. Like, what are you doing? You got a whole Tasha Steeles right here, a whole Giselle Shaw right here, a whole Savannah Evans, even Decay on their own, MK Ultra on their own, Spitfire on their own. You, you can't do that. that because that is just to quote Jay Lethal, that's disrespectful to me and this wrestling business. <laughs> Heading down the home stretch, get your super chats in, get your humper chats in, humperchats.com. Nick Nemeth, Speedball Mountain, defeat Macklin and the Rascals. A little bit of dissension in the ranks as Macklin is walked out on by the Rascals after Macklin misses a low pay, hits Trey Miguel, gets into it with Wentz, and Wentz is like, hey, man, screw you. That's basically how Zachary Wentz sounds. Screw you, man. And then <laughs> gets walked out on. Speedball and Seven hit their double team finish. Nemeth hits Nick Knack for the win. Let's talk about the match itself. There was so much going on. I liked it. What do you think of this match between, well, it was a six-man tag. I'm not going to tell you who's in it. Just talk to me about it. I think if these guys are going to be a three-man tag team, they need to change their finisher to knick-knack, patty whack, give a dog a bone. Stop I'm it. Gonna, I'm going to tell you what those moves are. It is the danger zone, knick-knack. It's called the knick-knack. Patty- so Patty Whack is going to be Trent Seven. Um, I forgot what that power it's- bomb it is that he does. Oh, the not the burning hammer. Okay, it could be the burning hammer. I like the burning hammer. That's oh, okay. better than what I had. Well, I mean, so, if you're going to patty whack to me, you whack somebody, that's going to be the seven star lariat. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll okay. do that. And give a dog a bone is the ultimate weapon. Because who go. wants to take that? Nick, that patty whack, give a dog a bone. It's free. There you go. That's, that is so free. That is free. That is free. That am, is free. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the match itself was good. Trent Seven was the star of this match. He got his Macklin also got his nipple slapped off. <laughs> I saw it fly into the crowd after Speedball and Trent Seven let that man have it. But Trent Seven got beat up this whole match. The hope spot where he was like, I'm gonna get your hands, Speedball. And Macklin said, I think not was pretty funny. Now, also, Rascals, y'all not right. I know we have been getting on Steve Macklin and and Joel Pearl and Steve Macklin squashed the beef, but y'all hold, y'all hold Steve Macklin tonight. That was a nice, that was not nice. Y'all beat up Trent Seven that whole match. Yes. But walking out on him, poor Macklin got hold. <laughs> ah, they used that man like a nine to five. That was not even nice towards the end of that match. I think it was the right call, but wow. Y'all really had to leave. It was an accident. Accidents happen, but I think y'all still mad that he didn't come out with y'all last week and he lost. So. Well, that's it. That's right. They they took they took offense to that. And also, like, the Rascals have felt third important in this. In, like, they, they were, like, number five and six mm-hmm. in the six-person tag, in the six-man tag. They were not, like, treated as importantly as literally everyone else involved. So, like, I can see them mounting frustration. And the next thing you know, they're like, ah, forget it. We're out of here. So I, that makes sense. But there's one spot. I, they, this is every six-man tag ever where you do someone comes in, hits a big move, gets knocked out. But, like, they did it really well. You had Nemeth get hit with the front locks uh, side slam from Wentz, who's then hit by the double knees from Speedball, who's then hit by the, the handspring kick from Trey, who's then hit by Bop and the seven-star Larry from seven, and then who's hit by Macklin's running knee. And then Macklin jumps, or dumps Nemeth outside, and that's what leads to the low pay. And that's where Trey Miguel gets knocked out, and that's where Wentz gets upset and says, hey, man, that's not cool. And then they- 
sorry. I forgot that that was in my notes. And, and then they left, and that was the fin- and gets to the finish. But other than that, again, a pretty a pretty solid six man tag. This towards the finish really was the Macklin and Nemeth show at the open and mm-hmm. at the end. And then, like you said, Trent Seven really did shine. He looks good. They do the really good spot where Macklin stops uh, Speedball from getting the hot tag from Trent Seven. Trent Seven's going for the hot tag. He's about to tag in Speedball, and Macklin just yanks him off the top of the uh, the apron. I like that. Those are good spots to use, and I like that that's how they, they went to use it this time. I just saw a comment in chat that made me incredibly angry. I'm sorry. It's not a super chat, and I'm not going to call you out, but to say Steve Macklin needs to go to NXT makes me want to hurt you. No, not no, physically. No. <laughs> no, no, no. So that's, that's Listen, this is, a, this is actually an, an interesting thing because Macklin spent a good amount of time in NXT, and – I think he learned a lot, but he he'll tell you himself. Like he has TNA has given him a lot of perspective of how to work a single style and how to work a different style, how to work TV. Cause he was basically buried for the views of his trios partner, him and Wesley Blake. And they didn't deserve that. I agree. I and, agree. And so <laughs> him going back to NXT isn't a bad thing. It's a good place to basically rebuild what you've been building on Let, let's listen we can be we can be honest with this i'm being honest i think yeah. that what he's done in tna he should be on main roster but he's not but that's the thing tna isn't exactly the if it's number three it's number three with a huge line down below i'm saying in terms of familiarity it's not the same you bring him into nxt you give him a big presentation and then you move him onto raw or smackdown you reintroduce him. The, the crowd in Florida, they're going to know who he is. They're going to pump him up. They're going to make him a big deal. And then you bring him up to the main roster and you make him the bigger deal. I think there's a good sinker, not a, not even sink or swim. I think there's a good opportunity to put a guy like Macklin in NXT to get him hot in front of crowd. Like, again, it, sorry, TNA is not working in front of crowds of thousands of people either. They're it. working the same size crowds as NXT is. And that's okay. I when when you talk, I try to listen to you, and I, I try to put things into perspective. And I'm like, you know what, Joel's right because I'm thinking incomparable to people who are already there. If they threw Macklin in main roster straight up, I unfortunately feel like he'd get the carrying cross treatment. He's a who? guy. He's a yeah, guy. He's a guy. He's a guy. But I don't think putting him in NXT is going to prevent that. That's fair it, too. It might give him a better shot, but I don't think NXT will prevent that. I say skip a step for all of that. I was literally TNA world champion, bro. Like clearly, clearly. Like you mean to tell me I can't beat up a Logan Paul and t- and you know what I mean? Like, but that yes, that's, that's a different show. And I know y'all don't like it when people talk about WWE in your TNA. <laughs> like oh, who put my WWE in my TNA? There are, people, there are people who have gone back to TNA, who have gone back to WWE, who go across and beyond the pond. AJ Francis <laughs> is a good example of someone moving True. from WWE to TNA, seeing success. We just Trinity. Did this Trinity absolutely saw a lot of success. There have been enough people who have found success. Deanna Perrazzo currently in AEW, absolutely a big deal. There are... There are ways to to build your talent and make them big. And you know what? Macklin did say in a recent interview that he would love to stick around TNA and, and, and be a part of that family, that team. If that's what he wants to do, great. If he sees himself going elsewhere, that's great too. I want I want him to be successful because yeah. he goes out of his way to make sure that he puts on the best show possible. I can't say that Macklin isn't a good wrestler and a good character and good talent i can't tell you he's not because he very much is and wherever he lands i can tell you i will follow i can tell you guys like sean ross sap will follow and cresta you're saying you will too that's good but we are not the people always in the crowds yeah at events there's a spot there and i that's why i say nxt let them let them build a familiarity with the base WWE audience, and then you build them up. I would love to see if he does stay in TNA, a face Macklin run, but like a really cheesy face Mac. Like, put it with Swing Daddy. I want to see what that'd be like, just for 10 minutes, for 10 minutes. <laughs> so in our interview, you know, we talked about what he's doing in Wrestling Revolver. That's a heel stable that he does, but like, 
he basically compared everyone like you've got this person this person mm-hmm. and he says and me i'm the handsome one and i was like ah shoot you are kind of good looking you are handsome damn that's why that's why Deanna and Parazzo married him that's he's mean, the handsome man yeah. like, see i see it <laughs> it's like nick nemeth has the jawline like so yeah 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 <laughs> but my point being is like you could do a steve macklin babyface run and people would probably buy it if the intentions are you know virtuous and true and uh-huh. yada yada you can do that and you can tell any story with a baby face coming from a heel if you tell it properly macklin's not you know an exception to this rule i just think because the way his presentation is and even with that strong jawline he's he looks like a very serious guy have swing daddy with him loosen up baby loosen up sweet i'm dying i'm dying or him and zicky that's no zicky that's not with it no more but you know what i'm saying you know, something, something really like out the box because he's very much like <laughs> someone saying macklin winning over five listen sean and him have always had a good rapport obviously diana and sean have also had a very good relationship over the years so i'm not talking out of school sean says it himself um yeah like macklin I don't think I need to tell y'all that the beef he and I had was it's fake. largely it's fake. manufactured. It's fake. It technically is my fault. So you know it's fake. It's, 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 it's fake. It's fake. Listen, it. everything's a work. This whole set, this Kevin Nash is not really back here. <laughs> no, he's he's back tomorrow on his own podcast. Exactly. And Renee Dupree, he's not back here. Okay. This is all a work. In fact, I'm not in Sean's basement. <laughs> well, that that's just not true. All right. Uh, how do you think I got this job? <laughs> you just share him bandwidth. It's okay. Yes, I need it. I need it, man. He got that good. Um, I don't even know where Sean is from. I gotta lie. Uh, Tennessee. Oh, ooh, yeah. Oh, I, can't tell you. <laughs> I was gonna make the Tennessee joke too. I'm glad I did. I'm like, yeah, he's the only. Know where he's from? It's crazy. Fake. Fake. What thing about Chris Lassar? She fake. Seriously. Uh, by the way, post post match system attack everybody. He'll knock them all out. Moose knocks out every member of Speedball Mountain and Nick Nemeth with that world title. So the system's on top, and they continue to be on top. And I don't hate that they're on top because this is a great heel faction. It's good stuff, even Lish. Yeah, this this is the best presentation again. And then and this is coming from someone who's like, "Yo, Edward Edwards, please, this is the best." This is the best. Someone said it in chat earlier, and I think I said it last week too. I wouldn't hate Frankie Kazarian joining this. I would not. You fit right in with these jabronis. You're slimy. You're greasy. No one's going to care when you lose your title that you're going to steal from somebody. X Division, not right now. Now, nah, Ali too hot. You can steal a digital media. You can do that. Nobody's going to be mad about it. But again, always err on the side of caution when it comes to one faction holding all the gold. It sometimes can be a little redundant. I've seen it far too many times in my in the past three, four years. I have faith in this. This is so far so good. I'm not mad. And again, because these guys are all unlikable heels, no matter who pins these guys, we're going to be like, that guy, that's the new guy. Yes, we hate you, Moose. Yes, we hate you, Brian Myers. Yes, we hate you, Eddie Edwards. Yes, that's the new guy. It could be Joe Pearl. Well, to the surprise of nobody, it's not going to be me, but... <laughs> TNA World Championship on the line at Rebellion. Nick Nemeth versus Moose is official, as is Speedball Mountain versus Edward Edwards for the World Tag Team Championships. We're going to try and get Trent Seven to show up in Vegas this time because he certainly wasn't available the first time. We've been travel issues. That's right, Laredo kid. We do. That's right. I mean, to be fair, to quote one Joe Pearl, what do Luchadors and TNA do? Lose. I'd miss that show too. I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's that's the show. We did it. We 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 did an hour on Impact. Uh, yeah, Trent should probably show up a week early in Vegas. At least this time, you know, travel's not going to be so bad. Um, I was going to point out, what do you do with Ali for the X Division Championship at Rebellion? Because I just had an idea, and I feel like maybe they'll consider it. I feel like with all of this and Ali, we trust and Ali, we believe you get the people right where you want them. And everyone's really close. And right when you say you're going to make the X division great again, you option C that shit. <laughs> oh, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> that's where I thought it was going. Cause he's talking all this crap and your whole thing is, I don't care about none of you. I'm trying to be champion. Yes. The X division. You love me. Yes, yes, yes. Ultimate X is coming up. Option C. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not participating in that. How do I look like an idiot? <laughs> That's what I. That's where I think this is going. Right when everyone's like, "Yeah, he's really doing it." 
Options, I don't care about this. Option C. <laughs> I wouldn't mind Nick Nemeth beats Moose and then option C, Ali walks out with that title at, at, at Palms. I wouldn't hate they do Ultimate X. Not Ultimate X. They do, like, they do Ultimate X, but for the X Division Championship. Mm-hmm. You know, so they, the Red X, they put up the title. And Ali wins. And you can still have him cash in option C at the end of the night. Give him a real record moment. Mm. But I wouldn't mind seeing Nick Nemeth, because it, cause it's only been a few months. Let him chase a little longer. Nemeth and Ali would be a great program to run at the top of TNA for a bit. Because Ali's cooking. He's doing stuff. Yeah. He's doing stuff. And I want to see that. But the option C option, that's good. Yeah, don't have Ziggler. Don't, don't have Nemeth win the title. Have him win it. Have them tease it. And then have him get cashed in on option seed, whatever you want to say, by Ali. That would work for or me. Or you could even take it one step further and have Ali beat Moose. And every time Nemeth is no, like... No, no, well, you, you can't because Ali is is a is a heel and so is Moose. But nobody cares. Moose is, no, again, no, is nobody no, care about Moose. <laughs> no, the, they're, they're supposed to be 1A, 1B on the on the depth charts. I see what you're saying, but like I, I never feel bad when bad things happen to Moose. Eddie Edwards, sometimes I feel bad for Brian Myers, but Brian Myers, you be hanging out with the wrong crowd, and that's kind of your fault. <laughs> it's fair, but uh, listen, you 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 gotta you gotta figure out the system. And I, I think they like- got it figured out. They're pretty. I don't think I don't think I don't think Nick Knack wins. I, I don't. I don't. No, but that's what I'm saying. I think Ali should say I figured out the system, and the system says screw you. I am the system, and I you know took the title, and yada yada. Here mm. we are. There's something you can do with that, and also the colors on. Uh, the rebellion, like it's very bright, almost Ollie colors. It's good. Anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll see what happens because we got a month until the show. True. Until then, we're back next Thursday. But until then, Crest the Star, what you got going on? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been saying on our show for weeks that I'm going to be starting my own podcast. And tomorrow I film and I am so excited. I can't wait to bring that to you guys. It's going to be super cool. But in the meantime, and in between time, every Thursday and Saturdays, you can find me here on, I uh, almost said TNA, Jesus Christ. I wish. Can you imagine? Can you believe? Um, here over here on Fightful, um, I cover Impact TNA with our good friend, Joel Pearl. Every Saturday, I am with Iridian Riccicino, and we go over everything that is collision. On Wednesday, sometimes you can find me on my personal socials, but that's about to change. But all of that can be found on my ex Twitter at Cresta the Star. There's even a playlist to all of the Impact shows, all of the TNA shows, all the Collision shows. What are you doing? Follow me. I love you. You love me. We're one big happy family. Joel Pearl, where can they find you at? Not hard to find. I am at Joel Pearl, J O E L P E A R L. How about I get in the weeds every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern, with Jeremy Lambert? We talk about the news and wrestling. We interview people. We do everything. That's over on Fightful Overbooked, youtube.com slash Fightful Overbooked, where you can also find the TNA Sacrifice post show that we did last Friday night. And maybe I'll show up on the Collision post show this week. Maybe I'll come. I'll be there. I'll be at Collision. If you're in Ottawa and you're going to attend AEW Collision, I will be there. If you're in Toronto, I will be at AEW Dynamite. I do live in Toronto after all. So come and hang out with us and me and everyone else. And of course, Thursday nights right here. ROH might come back next week. Who knows? Who cares? That's crazy. Let them be honorable sometime else. How about that? True. Okay. Listen. Till then, ladies and gentlemen, friends beyond the binary, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.